All right, folks, drive time. Today, we're gonna to talk about dieting, going down to the lower ends of diet, which is absolutely fine, and then why you need to come back out of it. So, on any diet, one of the best things that I find to start with is start with your calories as high as you can get away with. Don't suddenly go from eating loads to eating next to nothing because you're inevitably gonna push back against that. There's gonna be dietary pushback. Your body's gonna resist it. Your brain's gonna resist it. You're gonna to wanna to keep eating more. So figure out what your maintenance is. The easiest way to do that, you can use any one of a bunch of formulas to try and work that out. And are they accurate? Not necessarily, but will they give you a baseline to work from? Yes, they will, and then adjust from there. Easiest thing to do is to track your food for a week in detail, everything you eat, everything you drink, Figure out your average calories. So for example, work out the total calories you've eaten over seven days and divide that by seven gives you your average calories. Have you been losing weight, gaining weight or maintaining weight? That should give you whether you are in a deficit, maintenance or a surplus. Very, very simple. You can start at that point. Don't suddenly rip loads of calories away. Now, over time, as you are dropping body fat, you're probably gonna to want to drop calories in order to keep that going as your body weight drops. However, there is gonna come a time when you get to a point of kind of diminishing returns where you remove so many calories that you're really, really hungry, your risk of cheating, your risk of dropping off diet is increasing, your energy levels to train is decreasing, your intensity is decreasing, your likelihood of building muscle is decreasing. So we don't wanna stay down too low for too long. As we start to bring calories down, our body is going to kind of down-regulate. It's gonna to start to pull away the processes in the body that doesn't necessarily need to be operating at full force constantly. Now, this down-regulation, the easiest way to try and understand this is as your phone is running out of battery, the chances are you'll run into the settings and you will put it on low power mode because on low power mode, what your phone does is it switches off a load of background activity in the app and it uses less power by down-regulating the amount of power needed. Your body does the same. So imagine this, when the amount of energy coming in is starting to become restricted, your body will switch off all of its background processes or the non-necessary background processes and start to down-regulate everything. That's the easiest way to think about it. Now, what you need to do is recharge. You need to bring the amount of energy going in back up in order to switch your phone back out of low power mode. What happens on your average iPhone, that I'm filming on this, filming this on now, is that when you recharge it, it hits 80% battery and then it switches off low power mode automatically. Your body will do the same when you start to put more power in, more food, more fuel. It will switch itself back out of low power mode and it will start to upregulate everything, therefore you start to burn more calories, the processes start to improve. Now, what we shouldn't be doing when we're dieting is chasing fatigue. We shouldn't be chasing super low calories, thinking that that's gonna benefit us. What we need to do is find the right balance between optimal performance, optimal training output, maximum training output, whilst remaining in a good enough deficit to lose fat and keep that consistent. Taking away too many calories, you're compromising performance. Don't take away enough calories, you're compromising fat loss. We strike the balance between the two. So when you're bringing your calories down, don't keep them down there for too long because otherwise your body's gonna go into power save mode. It's not starvation mode or anything that people say like that. It's essentially a power save mode and the easiest way to think about that is the same as your phone. In order to bring it back out of power save mode, we upregulate things by increasing the amount of food going in. The easiest way to do that is bring your calories back up to maintenance. If you bring your calories back up to maintenance, you're not gonna gain any fat, so it's important you don't worry about that because you're just bringing them back up to maintenance. You just won't necessarily be losing fat for a week or so. But what that then serves to do, upregulates your metabolism, your body's burning more calories again, so then when you start to gradually pull calories away, you can create a fat loss effect again. Very, very simple. Now, when taking your calories down pretty low, it's important to understand that just because your calories are low doesn't necessarily mean that you are malnourished or it is a dangerous place to be. Your body is gonna ask for nutrients more than calories. So when you are dieting low calorie, and it's not the end of the world if you are, so long as it's fairly short term, you need to still make sure you are well nourished. This is why it's important to eat high quality proteins, to eat plenty of vegetables and a few pieces of fruit every day, because so long as you have those nutrients in your system, you are not going to be starving hungry, you're not gonna be going absolutely mental, you're not gonna be really, really struggling to diet. The reason most people struggle to diet is because they tend to restrict their food choices. So they'll maybe eat chicken and broccoli, and that's it. They're not taking in adequate and varied types of fats. They're not taking in adequate and varied types of proteins. They're not taking in adequate and varied types of vegetables. It's important that in order to maintain proper health and fully nourished, a fully nourished body, is that you vary the foodstuffs going in. If you're not doing that, you're going to suffer. 
the way to think about it, my theory is that the body is going to ask for nutrients long before it asks for calories. And the way to think about this is when you go to McDonald's, let's say you have a Big Mac meal with a milkshake, it's probably about 1400 calories, but it's 1400 empty calories. There's very few nutrients in there. You're essentially eating shit. Now, an hour and a half after you've had your Big Mac meal, these 1400 calories, you're fucking starving again. Your body's going crazy, you want more food. Now, fast forward to Christmas Day. Christmas Day, you eat probably 12 to 1400 calories worth of Christmas dinner. Now, Christmas dinner, weirdly, is actually quite healthy. Tons of protein, loads of nutrients, loads of vegetables. Yeah, it's cooked in lots of fats, this, that, and the other. But the amount of nutrients you're taking in is actually quite high. When are you hungry again? An hour later, like you were from 12 to 1400 calories of happy, of, uh, sorry, McDonald's? Not at all. You're not hungry until later that night. You can go eight, nine, ten hours without eating. The same amount of calories, completely different nutrient profile. So does your body really ask for loads and loads of calories? Probably not. It's asking for the nutrients within those foods. This means you shouldn't be too concerned about going fairly low calorie so long as you are taking in the right amount of nutrients. That will make your life easier. Very, very simple. That is low calorie dieting in a nutshell how to survive it when you're trying to get really, really lean, and why it's important to not stay down there for long. Now, a load, no load of you are probably sitting there thinking, yeah, but how long? Realistically, it depends on the person, it depends how much fat they have to lose, because if you've got a lot more fat, you can stay lower calorie for longer, because your body has more stores of fat to take from. If, however, you're extremely lean, you don't have much fat, you don't have much potential energy to use, you don't want to stay down there for too long because your body's going to start chewing through muscle. So the fatter you are, the longer you can stay down there. The leaner you are, the less time you should stay down at low calories. But you can spike in and out. Let's say if you're very, very lean, stay down there for a week or two, and you need to spike back out to maintenance for at least two or three days. If you're a lot fatter, maybe you can stay down there for a month, six weeks, then you're going to want to spike out. But again, this is not black and white, there are grey areas, there is the mental pushback, there are psychological, emotional, social issues of dieting that need to be taken into account. This is why the Live Up plan is planned as, as it is. It takes into account the social aspects, it takes into account the mental, psychological, physical aspects of dieting. It's not black and white. Hopefully this has given you a slightly better understanding of your metabolism and why it's important to move in and out of periods of low calories and high calories or at the very least maintenance. There is obviously a lot more to it but as you know I try to simplify most of these concepts as best I can for you um, and hopefully it's been of some assistance. So yeah that's today's drive time thoughts. I'm gonna eat.